There we go. Now you're hearing me. All right, so let's try that again. So <laughs> I got 17 seconds to do the quick little intro recap. Basically, we are trying something new. Obviously, didn't get it quite set up right right away there. Um, broadcasting live, you can go ahead and close that. Broadcasting live with our countdown before we actually start the live show with me talking. Of course, you were just hearing music and seeing me wave my hands around, but you were supposed to be hearing me talking. What I was saying was, for those of you that are watching live, Give us a shout out in the comments so I can give a shout out back to you. Say hello. It's always nice to see who's actually watching live. And um, we'll start the show. Well, now we're over time to start the show. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's get rid of the clock. And now it's just me. So good morning, everybody, and welcome to a Photo Justice Photo Moment. Today is the 19th of September. It is Monday morning. It's getting cooler outside. Fall is getting closer. Frankly, I can't wait. I love that time of year. And what I wanted to show you guys or talk about today was, of course, the fancy new iPhone 7 Plus, which I got my hands on just last week and on Friday did a little unboxing. If you haven't seen that, it's fun If for nothing else than the comedic effect of seeing these fall out of my head. But what I wanted to talk about today was, of course, the camera. So this is the 7 Plus, which has got the new dual camera system. And I did a, a short little extra video on, uh, on Friday afternoon just showing when the second camera, the telephoto camera, comes into play. And I gotta admit it, it was really kind of surprising to me and it was a little bit weird in how it's happened. And now that I've used it for a little while, I understand a little bit more of what's happening. But you don't actually necessarily always get that second camera just because you tap on the 2X button, the zoom button. Turns out that that second camera, the telephoto camera, uh, doesn't have super close focusing. So if you're focused quite close on something, and that doesn't necessarily mean I'm focusing on this thing right here in front of me, but even if I'm, I found out over the weekend, if I'm shooting my kid who's like maybe you know, a little more than arm's reach away, um, and I do a 2X, that's too close for the new lens to focus. So what happens is you get a digital zoom, which off the original camera, which is not what I was expecting, and definitely not what I want. So. As it is right now, you have no UI that shows you which camera is actually being used, which is kind of, I mean, I get from the consumer standpoint, who cares, just take the picture. But if you want to make sure that you're getting the most out of your camera, then this is kind of important. So um, having some kind of indicator of which lens you're using, I think would be quite important. Now, third parties are apparently have access to those to both lenses. Even this is confusing me. I was trying to do some research on this to figure out with um, with various other third-party apps out there whether they're accessing that, whether they can decide to turn it on or off. In one article I read, it said that um, Camera Plus is specifically going to be calling out whether you want to access that second camera or not, whether you, whether you want to use digital zoom or not, rather, which would be really important. So I'm looking forward to an update from them because I do not want to ever digital zoom. Like never, ever. If if I if you can't focus that close, then just don't switch to it or give me a warning or something. Um, but I don't ever want a digital zoom. So hopefully that'll that'll be coming. Uh, but anyways, for what I wanted to show today was there was a, a image that I posted. Let's go ahead and uh, get this camera fired up here. There was an image that I posted over the weekend using Lightroom Mobile and I shot on the Lightroom with, uh, let's see, that should be coming up now. Hello, come up, come up, come up, come up. Let's try that again. Um, shooting with Lightroom Mobile, where you can shoot raw, the DNG file, with your iPhone. What is it? So the 6S, there we go, now it's up. Uh, the 6S and above, obviously the 7s, and one, oh, and the 5, not the 5, sorry, the SE also shoots raw, and then a couple of the latest iPads will shoot raw as well. And uh, um, you have to have the, a camera that will shoot with that, right? A software app that will shoot with that. The built-in app will only shoot to the JPEG, meaning the camera app that's part of iOS 10 only shoots to the JPEG files. It's opened up to third-party developers, and so Lightroom was one of the first to do that. Um, there's a few manual has already done it. There's a few other apps out there that have already added the raw support, which is obviously very, very cool. So what I wanted to do was I went out early Saturday morning to try and take a couple of pictures and see if I could get, uh, do something to get a good example of, I guess that is the one, a good example of uh, what the raw could be. So let me do this. Let's see here. I can revert this image, um, I think. How do I do that? Oh, that's right. 
uh, edit, and we are going to reset, reset all. Reset to import, reset all, looks like it's the same thing. So this is the shot, this is what we shot. This is the iPhone picture, this is the original raw file. Now, if I had just shot the same photo with the built-in camera, obviously it would have shot a JPEG, but it wouldn't have looked like this because the software iOS itself, it's its own software, is going to do some processing. And it would have brought up the sky a bit and uh, or pushed back the sky a little bit, brought up the shadows a little bit. It would have done that automatically. So you would have had a picture that looks better than this. But this is the raw file. This is what the camera originally captures before any processing is done to it. And this is what I was able to capture in Lightroom. So you can very clearly see this. It's sunrise. The sky has some nice color to it. The foreground is Complete, oops, completely dark here. So clearly that's no good, uh, but it's a raw file. So let's see what we can do with it. So I am in the edit mode here. Let's go into edit mode. There we go. And let's start with just plain old exposure. Just if I bring up the exposure in the whole image, it's gonna be way too much for the background because uh, we wanna push that the other direction. But just to see what data is in here, let's bring it up and you can really see that there is a lot of detail, a lot of data in that. So if I was just focusing on the foreground, didn't care about the sky, uh, maybe somewhere around there would be good. I'd probably go a little bit high like that and then bring up the blacks because it's looking a little flat. But there is a lot happening in there. Now, obviously, at this point, the sky is completely gone. So let's go the other direction, go underexpose and look at what I can make the sky do. I can make the sky take on a really nice, rich, rich tones. That's actually quite nice in there, that sky. So one file, so there's the sky and there's the foreground. And this is, of course, because it's raw. And just to point out again, this is shot with the iPhone. This is kind of cool. All right, so let's do this. Let's uh, reset the exposure back to normal. And I'm going to go to shadows. So let's see here down at the bottom, there's shadows. And let's raise the shadows up a bit. So that's too much. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is let's take the overall exposure up and then we're gonna worry about bringing the sky back in, back down later. I actually don't remember how I processed this. I was kind of half awake when I did it um, for the one that I already posted, but, but let's just see what happens. So shadows are still up a little bit. Let me bring that up a little bit more. Maybe add a little contrast. I don't know if I wanna do contrast or blacks. This is not, yeah, shadows are way too high. That's definitely not gonna be a good way to do it. Let's do that. Um, let's just, do I wanna hit the auto tone button? Sure, let's hit auto tone. Yeah, no, I don't like that. How do I undo that? Oh, off, good. Okay, let's try bringing the highlights. Where's the highlights? There we go, highlights down a little bit. So we're getting somewhere. Now our sky is of course completely gone. Still completely gone. Let's bring up some color. Let's add a little clarity and then add some color into this because we've really lost our color in the foreground. Now we're starting to get somewhere with the foreground. Oh, there we go. Foreground's starting to look pretty good there. Pretty good. We don't want to go like it's full on daylight. This was early morning after all, but that's looking pretty good. Okay, now the sky is completely shot still. So let's go to a local adjustment and just uh, drag down on the screen. So this is new to Lightroom Mobile as of some recent version. Uh, and I'm gonna take the exposure and take that way down. There we go. So now the exposure is dropped down on the sky. A Little bit too much saturation in that, um, that sunrise there. Let's see here, I think I'll bring this up. No, I should quite like it down like so. This is really cool, being able to change, add your gradient adjustment directly within Lightroom Mobile now. Um, so let's see, let's do that. Let's bring, oops, bring the exposure down just a little bit more. Come back here. There we go, down a little bit more. Pretty cool there, pretty good. Um, yeah, too much saturation on the orange though. Let's see here, what other local adjustment can I do? Can I add? Another one, linear or radial. I'm not even sure if I can just add a new one. Well, let's just take the saturation down, let's do that. I gotta play with this app some more and figure out what I can and can't do in here. Cause I'm actually not sure. Can I do more than one local adjustment? I have not played with that before. Oops, I'll have to do that at some point. So anyway, we're off to, we're getting somewhere. I mean, that's, that's looking pretty good. Given that this came from a single raw image uh, I would say that's pretty impressive. I think, let's see, do I want to do anything else to it? I would like to add another local adjustment, but I'm not sure if I can. Oh, yeah, I think I can just click and drag again on here. Is that right? Maybe there's a little, there's a little plus. Let's see what that guy does. 
Add a little plus. Hey, there we go. Now I added a second one. Cool. Okay, so let me get rid of that because I don't want that. I want to add a radial selection. Oops, I don't want to change the one that I had. There we go. Radial selection. We're going to drop this here. Let's make that, let's see, I want to make that a little bit wider. So I'm going to stretch that out and now rotate that guy. Rotate, rotate, rotate. There we go. Rotate that guy. And we're going to take down a little bit of saturation. Where's my saturation? There we go. Take a little bit of saturation out of that sky because it's just a little bit too much. There we go. All right, I'm, I'm good with that. So let's get out of here. Oop, wrong button. Let's, I guess there we go. So yeah, that's it. That's the image. That's pretty slick. Um, additional editing tools. Don't give me hints now. Did I open up the wrong one? I did. Is that the one that I just did? Nope, that's the earlier one that I did. I don't even know where I am anymore. Totally lost. Anyway, you can see that that is clearly a huge, huge change. Huge change. Let's see here. I do want that same file I was just working with because, is this it? Yeah, this is it. Because I want to now send this thing off to Photoshop Fix to do a little retouching. So you see we've got these power lines up in the top left corner there. Let's get rid of those. So I'm going to tap on this and go to uh, Edit In. Maximum available. I don't think this is right, but maybe it is. Edit photo. Oh yeah, that's it. Liquid no uh, healing in Photoshop Fix. Let's do that. There we go. Healing in Photoshop Fix coming up here, and brush. Okay, so this guy, brush size. Drag your finger up and down to change the brush size and softness. And what I have realized on here is that the size. It, the size that you're choosing is relative to the screen. How it compares to the image is simply whether you're pinched into the image or not. So if I was to draw a line right now, you can see the size of it there. It's matching my finger width. Obviously, that's not what I want to do, so let's undo that. Um, -hoo, undo that. If I pinch in, pinch way, way in here, we are still going to get the same size relative to my finger on the screen, but of course, it is now going to be a much smaller relative to the photo. So let's just draw that line out. There we go. Two fingers to scroll. Oops, grab that. There we go. Two fingers. Getting rid of that. Let's get rid of that line there. Get rid of that. And come on, you go away. There we go. Did I get the whole thing? I did. Excellent. Save and return to Adobe Lightroom up at the top. And uh, there we go. Brings us back. Closes it, opens it. Is it going to reopen it? That's not the right one. There it is. And there's the picture. Not too shabby. From a single raw image shot on the iPhone 7 Plus. Now that's with the regular lens. Not with the zoom lens, as far as I know. Who knows? Who knows? Looking pretty good. That is what I wanted to look at today. So I am... Number one, I'm blown away by these raw files and what we're doing in here. I haven't even brought one of the DNG files over into the uh, computer yet to see what I can do there. That'll be a next step. We'll definitely want to be doing that. Uh, I will obviously be continuing to work with this, not only here, but over on the photoapps.expert site. I'm going to be diving deep into all of this stuff. Mac OS Sierra comes out tomorrow, so we're going to have photos for iOS and photos for Mac to look at with some new features, bringing in the raw files that, uh, that are shot on this camera into photos, seeing what we can do with it there maybe taking it into Photoshop, Lightroom, who knows? Lots and lots of options. It's really, really exciting stuff that we're dealing with here today. Um, it's a very exciting time for mobile photography, I think. All right, folks, that is it for me today. Um, as always, if you have any questions or anything that you would like to see as a photo moment, please let me know. Just put it in the comments or private message me. You know how to find me. And um, if you're watching live, for those who are watching live, I'd love to see you watching live. Throw out some comments in here. Don't be afraid to say hi. It's good to see who's watching live. And uh, uh, you know, always just going to make me happy. Let's get that screen up. All right, folks, that's it. I'm out of here. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.